So hello, everyone. My name is Samantha Lodowick, uh, and thank you for joining us today. We're very excited for our second uh, virtual Indie Tableau user group meeting. Uh, so just a few housekeeping items before we dive into the ITUG overview. Uh, first of all, everyone is automatically on mute with audio and camera turned off, so you don't have to worry about any unflattering camera angles or dogs barking. Um, if, when using the chat, uh, please make sure to select all panelists and attendees, so that way everyone knows what is being said and no one is left out. Um, make sure to please leverage the Q&A section. We do encourage everyone to participate. Uh, you know, if you have any questions during the meeting, please don't hesitate to speak up. Um, and besides that, the session is recorded, uh, being recorded, and we will send up send out the recording and a follow-up email uh, and also post in our LinkedIn group after the fact. Okay, so today's agenda, uh, we're going to go ahead and just start with an overview of ITUG. This acts as a refresher for those who already belong to the group and an intro for those who are new. Um, quick, uh, quick poll here, you can go ahead and type in the chat. How many people have attended a meeting before and how many people are new? You can either type, um, you can type new or you could say first meeting or you've been here a bajillion times. So let's see who comes out here. Okay, so a decent amount uh, that looks like new. Okay, so fairly mixed, got it. Uh, yeah, those work things do tend to get in the way, don't they, Scott? <laughs> um, good thing we're, we are recording this time in case any fires come up and you have to hop off. Okay, so we have a good mix of new and existing here. Um, so, and then also curious as well, how many people um, are from, from an IT sort of roller focus and how many people are more on the business side of the house? Let's see, biz, IT, hybrid. Yes, hybrid is an answer. So business side. Okay, gotcha. So it looks like we have a lot of uh, hybrid and business coming in and that is fairly typical. I would say about two thirds of our members are from the business side of the house or kind of in hybrid role. And then the remaining, I would say, you know, half to a third are come from an IT focus. Um, but just a way we, we generally, if we were in person, we would we would poll everyone and have them raise their hands. But it's nice to understand kind of who our audience is, where the, all the other members are coming from. And then, uh, you know, I think having those different perspectives and views along with, um, you know, different backgrounds just goes to show how, you know, how, uh, I guess, pervasive Tableau has been in a very positive way um, and how there's people, whether from a technical background or not, that are easily able to adapt and start using it to really answer those important questions. Um, but I digress. So the rest of today's agenda, uh, we're going to go ahead and also uh, do a recap of Tableau Conference 2020. Um, we are also going to have Ryan Moore be presenting uh, on election maps. We have our regular tips and tricks portion, and then we'll go ahead and wrap, the, wrap up the meeting. Uh, this is open forum for any general questions. Uh, we always look for uh, people who are interested in speaking, topics you're interested in seeing, any ideas or improvements you'd like to see for the group. We've done uh, some new things, for example, such as incorporating surveys into the meetings, uh, and then see if this is still a time of day and maybe links that works for everyone. So, and of course, happy holidays, and hopefully everybody has a lot of PTO this month. So, <laughs> uh, this is just a quick disclaimer, uh, just some legal jargon, um, you know, nothing outrageous here, but this is basically saying like, hey, uh, don't, make sure you scrub your dashboards, you're not uh, sharing any proprietary sensitive company data um, with the group. So, just be aware of that. We will be sending out these slides and sharing these after the fact so you'll be able to review this further later if needed. 
So the purpose of iTug, uh, you know, iTug is really meant to be a member-led and driven user group uh, that was developed as a, as a resource and a catalyst for Tableau users in the indie area and beyond, and really just generally an analytics enthusiasts. So really the foundations here are we want to encourage peer-to-peer -peer networking and sharing best practices, encouraging, you know, uh, discussion and knowledge share when it comes to Tableau business and technology challenges. You know, what are these issues that we're all commonly coming across and how can we solve them? Um, and any other business and technology use cases, industry, uh, industry use cases, um, and just in general, just trying to open the floor here to learn something new from someone else and uh, maybe open the door to other ways that you could be using Tableau. Um, so the structure of the group is we are led by co-chairs. So uh, you have myself, you have Brad, you have Ryan, you have Clayton. Um, so the ITUG co-chairs are here to establish some credibility with the group. So uh, answer any questions you may have, provide direction on the meetings, topics, presentations, and also help us find speakers um, and different uh, local companies and organizations who are open to hosting or participating. So the format of the group, now typically if uh, in non-pandemic times we, we aim to meet quarterly in person, these are typically about three hour meetings um, with a networking break in between. Now we have shortened that structure just to make things easier. Um, you know, while we are all virtual, meetings are a little bit shorter and we've been having typically about one or two presentations. Um, besides that, we do encourage and we're always looking for members who are willing to speak and we need your suggestions, uh, your vote, your direction, because this group really, is, the, our members are really what the, makes the group what they are today. Um, all of our, our in-person meetings are hosted by either members, uh, the, their organizations or companies of uh, that they work for or at local educational institutions. And typically we do like to include, you know, two to three topics per four presentations per meeting, typically an intro or in advance and advance. So that way there's something for everyone and then ad hoc discussion around Tableau news and events such as Tableau conference. So if you are not already part of our LinkedIn group, I will heavily encourage you to please go and join. Um, that is the number one best way to, to stay in the loop of upcoming meetings and events, um, to network with other members, especially while we're virtual right now and can't meet in person. We also post all of the event resources and uh, any, any slides, workbooks, things of that sort in the group. We do email those out after the fact as well, just so we have uh, double coverage. Um, but all in all, please connect with us on LinkedIn. And then we have had some reports of some people who say, hey, I get meetings for, or I get meeting invites from Tableau sometimes. Otherwise, I find out about the meeting on our LinkedIn group. But how can I stay in the loop? As I mentioned already, LinkedIn group is number one best way to stay up to date. Um, you also can register directly with Tableau and receive updates by using the community link I have showing here. Um, I would also encourage everyone to make sure that they subscribe to the Splash Events iTug Hub, uh, where you'll also be notified when we post a new event. Uh, and please check your, your spam folder to make sure that all these domains are, not are uh, tagged as safe senders, so that way you're not missing anything. All right. And, uh, before we move on to the Tableau Conference uh, 2020 recap, I do want to add um, and mention that this will actually be my last ITUG uh, as a co-chair. So I will be officially retiring uh, this at uh, the end of this year in 2020. Um, basically, I've, my, my career has taken a different direction than I originally anticipated, um, no longer uh, we'll be staying up in the Chicago area and not doing any moving um, and also going to be focused on business and IT alignment, uh, senior sales and account management, and overall business technology strategy. Um, I will still be here and regularly be attending these meetings, and I'm sad to have to say goodbye, but want to say thank you to everyone for 
I think it's been almost three years since I've been part of the group and two since I've been a co-chair. So I uh, really appreciate everyone's time and I'm glad to be able to still kick things off and join our last meeting of the year. So uh, with that being said, Brad, go ahead and take it away. Thanks, Sam. We're going to miss you. Thanks for, for everything you've done for the group. Thank uh, you. Can everyone hear me okay? Sam, can everyone hear me okay? Perfect. All right. Uh, awesome. Yep, um, all right. So the first kind of topic we will uh, start with is kind of the, the Tableau 20 recap. And if you guys wanted to, uh, to put in the chat, um, if you guys attended Tableau Conference-ish uh, 2020 um, or not, um, as I kind of go through kind of the recap. So Sam, next slide. Um, so uh, the virtual conference uh, was held between October 6th and October 8th this year. It was uh, free to attend uh, and, and it was free to access uh, post-conference. So some of the materials that I'll be taking you through, um, I will do a, a quick little demo um, of the, the conference website. Um, but Tableau did a really great job um, keeping kind of the, the, the same look and feel of Tableau conference, uh, except being virtual. Um, so they had brain dates, they had, you know, Tableau doctor sessions that you can sign up. Um, they even got the celebrities in. Um, so I know I, I, I love music, so I certainly watched the John Legend concert um, and uh, watched the, the, the Neil deGrasse Tyson uh, talk and the, the Netflix talk with, with Mark Randolph. So uh, those were all really good um, sessions. Uh, they also, uh, a super popular um, kind of event every year at Tableau Conference is um, devs, on, devs on stage, uh, and actually it's uh, kind of transformed this year to devs at desk. So I thought that was uh, pretty, uh, pretty awesome uh, that they had that. And then you also had the Iron Viz, uh, which, was, which was very well done as well. So um, still had the, had the look and feel of kind of the, the same Tableau conference that everyone knows and loves. Um, so Sam, will you, uh, next slide please. Uh, so first, I wanted to start kind of with the with the Tableau roadmap, and these are high kind of overarching um, kind of items of kind of where Tableau is going. Many of you probably you know understand uh, this from from the news, especially the recent news with this uh, with with uh, Salesforce acquiring Slack. Um, so as you know, as we see over the next few years, there will be a lot more Tableau Salesforce Slack integration. Um, we continue to, to move towards the browser uh, and the capabilities around the browser. Um, so um, a, a great, a couple new features is prep builders coming to the uh, browser and then there's also auto save. So in case you were to accidentally close out of a, um, you know, a, a, a page or whatever, um, it, it will, everything will be saved. Um, you know, again, kind of Salesforce integration as well, along with Slack. So um, Einstein Analytics and Tableau, they featured a lot of that at Tableau Conference this year. Um, and Ask Data is also coming um, to, uh, to Einstein. Um, another uh, nice thing is centralized real level, level security. So before, I'm not going to get into the details uh, about real level security in Tableau. Um, but there, there, it was kind of a, almost kind of a, a hacky way around uh, to obtain real level security. Uh, and then lastly, uh, a lot of enhancements to Tableau server. Um, you have these things called personal spaces, which think of this as kind of your personalized sandbox uh, where you can still store and work with uh, items on Tableau server without kind of letting them open to a, a broader audience or even your team for that matter. Uh, and then collections. Uh, you can think of this as kind of a, a custom um, music playlist uh, like you would have on Spotify or Apple Music. Um, and one thing to note about this is when you do add something to a collection, uh, it still stay that that visual or that workbook or that data source still stays in that original resting place. It's then also a copy of it is also added to your collections pane to make it make it uh, easier for you to see. Uh, and then uh, Tableau continues to do a lot of governance improvements. Um, throughout the product. So Sam, next slide, please. Uh, one of the, the, the things that I kind of wanted to take a, a little bit deeper dive in is uh, the devs at desk and um, uh, formerly devs on stage, but this is kind of where um, Tableau outlines all the new features. So I just wanted to, to touch on some of the highlights. Uh, this is by no means kind of an all in inclusive um, you know, everything is included here, but these are kind of the, the big takeaways. Um, so uh, the first kind of section is, is kind of Tableau desktop and mapping. 
Uh, they've done a lot of improvements with map layers. Uh, so you can now have multiple uh, map layers. I want to say you can have up to six, but don't quote me on that. Um, you can disable selection uh, on map layers, right? So if you wanted to include uh, multiple layers, but you didn't want to necessarily show that selection or show that layer yet, you could, you could disable it. Uh, and you can also reorder of map layers. You can make some kind of cool, some funky um, uh, mapping with kind of the reordering of the labels. Uh, another really cool uh, feature is they've added um, predictive modeling and forecasting um, into, uh, into desktop. Um, so you'll see uh, if you if you view the kind of the demo or the uh, if you view the um, the screen, uh, you'll see this option where if you click on that kind of predict predicted value, you can show future values uh, instead of just having that that one kind of uh, forecast uh, forecasted line. Uh, so that was really cool. Uh, and then they've also added uh, LOD calculations. They call it uh, that they made them easy. Um, and while they did make them easy, where you can actually generate them with a click of a button, you still need to understand them. Um, so anyway, um, you know, if, if you had trouble writing them, I guess this, this, uh, you know, this feature would be useful for you, but you still have to kind of understand what, what's going on. So, um, Sam, next slide, please. Uh, so now we'll talk about Tableau Prep. Um, they've added a ton of spatial support in Tableau Prep. Uh, one example um, are spatial calculations. Um, so like buffer, uh, make line, make point, um, those types of, of calculations are all included in prep now. Um, you can also hide uh, the field features in Tableau prep. So one might think that, you know, how did it take them so long to kind of add this? Uh, but if you think if you have, you know, say 500 variables uh, in your prep flow, um, for you to kind of scroll back and forth all those 500 variables, it would make it very kind of clunky to work with. Um, so you can hide kind of those, those columns um, that you're not using uh, in Tableau Prep. So, you know, again, a simple feature, but a nice, a nice uh, kind of touch uh, to help you kind of keep your, your analysis flow uh, going. Uh, and then another kind of nice little, little addition is you can group steps, right? So if you wanted to have, um, you know, the first step might be data acquisition, and then the next step might be a collection of data cleaning, and then maybe a join step and so forth. So uh, the ability to group multiple kind of Tableau prep items into, into a group. Uh, for those of you that are also Altrix users, uh, this would be similar to a container in Altrix. Sam, next slide, please. Uh, so Ask Data 2.0 uh, was a big focus of Tableau uh, recently. Uh, and, and, and I'll go over some of these. These are, these are good. This is going to get really cool. Um, Ask Data 1.0 was, was pretty cool, but Ask Data 2.0 is getting, is getting really, really slick. Um, you can add additional words um, to uh, Ask Data. Uh, for example, like filter, subcategory, and over time. And that over time word um, kind of tells Ask Data that you actually want a line chart. You know, typically, you know, line charts over time, that, that's typically what you associate with a line chart. Um, so if you can add that, it's just a little bit better uh, and more slick when it comes to actual natural language processing um, by adding kind of that over time. Um, most popular items are displayed at the top. So an example here, if you start typing SAN uh, and, and maybe San Jose might pop up at the top because you have a lot of records containing San Jose. So it kind of is another visual clue um, to the user that, hey, we have a lot of records that, that, that say San Jose. Um, easier search, find and select. Um, similarly, if you search, um, you know, Kelly, uh, a list of Kelly's will show up and it'll also show which tables uh, each of those fields belong to. Uh, again, making it much easier to find uh, exactly want, uh, what you want. Uh, you can emphasize, um, uh, ask data, it emphasizes the words it understands and grays out the one it doesn't. Um, so uh, an example here is um, maybe it doesn't understand um, uh, subcategory. So uh, what you can do is you can say, you can tell, uh, ask data that, hey, we don't mean subcategory, we actually mean category, and it learns over time. Uh, I know a lot of you guys uh, use kind of data catalogs uh, that also learn over time. So it's similar to kind of a data catalog that learns over time and understands kind of the relationships between your data. Um, if you hover over a word recognized by Ask Data, it shows how it kind of impacts the results that it's generating back. Um, when you hover over, you know, a word like binder, it automatically understands uh, or assumes that you want to filter, in this case, subcategory to binders. Um, 
And then lastly, um, kind of like I was explaining, uh, it learns over time, right? So another example might be um, which industry has the most profit? Um, well, maybe industry in the database is called uh, segment. Uh, so you actually, as a user, can go into Ask Data and say, hey, Ask Data, industry actually means segment. So every time someone uh, uses segment or industry, it's actually going to make that connection and realize that, oh, hey, this user actually means, uh, means industry uh, or segment. Uh, vice versa. So um, really cool stuff coming for Ask Data. I'm really excited to, to start uh, leveraging that kind of in the future. Sam, next slide, please. Uh, so next will be Tableau Server. Uh, probably the biggest one um, that's going to, uh, the, the biggest kind of advancement is to grant uh, a role on sign-in checkbox. Uh, so users will be assigned a minimum site role um, but this helps with kind of the maintenance uh, of Tableau Server is really going to help uh, your Tableau Server admins out, um, you know, especially from an, in the scenario where someone needs a specific site role in order to access the Tableau Server. Um, you know, so you'd have to go into Tableau Server, you'd have to, you know, assign them a site role and then they can log in. This is much more seamless of a process. Um, there's going to be new AI additions to the automated Tableau Server emails. Um, something that I touched on earlier is a, is a new sh kind of shared with me tab um, that allows um, you to see specific views um, or other specific views that, that maybe your colleagues have shared. Um, there's a custom views tab, uh, this new collections tab, which I, which I touched on a little bit. Um, another really cool thing was the export to Excel in the browser. Uh, so before you couldn't do this. And then when you actually select CSV or Excel, Tableau will maintain a bunch of your table formatting. Uh, before it was kind of just a, 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 a kind of a, a data dump, if you will, into, into you know Excel or CSV. Now Tableau, if you want to keep the table formatting, uh, will, will, it, it's a little bit better at, at keeping that that formatting for you. Uh, and then lastly is, is a redesigned notification center uh, with you know data alerts, comment commenting, uh, and, and so forth. So Sam, next slide, please. Um, so the last uh, portion of kind of the devs at desk is uh, the IT administration. Um, I know a lot of people have been kind of, uh, you know, grumbling about uh, refresh schedules for extracts. Uh, previously, um, users had to submit a request or email their Tableau admin so they set up um, a refresh schedule uh, if it wasn't already added. Um, so now uh, it's going to be totally custom. Uh, it's not going to be just the 15th or the last of the month or something, you know, fairly common like that. Uh, users, users can actually go in uh, and, and, and specify uh, the extract refresh schedule, um, you know, for their specific extract. Um, another nice thing is a hey, stale Brad. content admin view. Hey, sorry, Brad. Uh, we have a question in the chat I just wanted to bring up before you got too far. Oh, Ryan already got to it. Uh, we had a question in the chat, you know, what version of Tableau exports to Excel? Um, and that's 2020.3. So. Yeah, great question. Um, I think this one um, that uh, maintains more of your uh, table formatting um, is potentially going to be in the next 2020.4, uh, uh, which might, I, I believe it's already out by now. I think 2020.4 is out or, or it's very soon. So, uh, but yes, uh, for, for that export to Excel in the browser, it's going to be a, a more recent version of, of Tableau Server. Great question. Thanks, Dan. Thanks. Um, uh, so we were at the uh, the sale content admin view. Um, so a lot of the clients that we've worked with, um, we have to develop some processes around, um, you know, when to take things off the off the uh, Tableau server. Um, you know, if people have large data sets. You know, your Tableau server can start. You know, to uh, the performance can start to be affected. Um, so there's going to be a new um, view, uh, and you can actually tell it what's considered stale. Right, so one company might consider stale, you know, three months, uh, but another company might consider stale, you know, six months. Right, so you can customize kind of your definition of, of stale and what makes most sense to you. Um, you can also tag them as stale, right? So it gives your users kind of that that notification that says, "Hey, we can still use this, right?" But it's it's considered stale, so kind of use with, use with caution, if you will. Uh, and then all of those things that are tagged as stale. Uh, if you wanted to kind of clean these up, uh, you can view and delete all of those uh, items that were tagged as stale kind of all in kind of one, one uh, delete button. Um, so that's going to be a really nice feature coming very soon. 
Uh, and lastly, uh, there's Tableau Bridge improvements. Um, to be totally honest, I have not personally used Tableau Bridge that much, um, but I know a lot of you have. Um, the, it, you know, Tableau Bridge, uh, just a little bit background, it's a lightweight client that sits behind your firewall and refreshes extracts, extracts and proxies live connections. Um, you can use Tableau Bridge to connect to, you know, a cloud data, database and a private network. So a good example of this might be Redshift uh, or Snowflake. Um, you used to have to use IP whitelisting for cloud hosted data. It was kind of clunky. Uh, and if any, if any of the cr credentials changed from that uh, data source, um, you actually had to uh, log in to the machine that Tableau Bridge was, in, was hosted on. And, and make those changes locally. And, and then now you don't have to do that. So that's a huge, huge improvement. Uh, and then lastly um, would be, uh, you can load balance extracts across bridge clients. Uh, and this allows Tableau Online to select the best possible bridge to send uh, a request or job uh, to. And it kind of helps with your performance uh, of the Tableau bridge uh, and leveraging a lot of those, um, those kind of connections. So um, Sam, with that, uh, the next slide. All right, perfect. Um, so here are a couple of these resources. These are important resources for you guys. Um, one is just the, the Tableau Conference 2020 website. That's tc20.tableau.com. Uh, I will briefly show uh, showcase this uh, just so you kind of kind of have a, a look and feel about this. Uh, and the last, which I'll also uh, demo, is um, the Information Labs um, Average Response by Session Interactive Viz. And um, let me, uh, I'll, I'll dive into a little bit more about this, um, but this is a really, really awesome resource that, that the information um, lab developed. Uh, and I'll show you that here in just one second. So uh, Sam, I'm gonna share my screen. Yes. I will stop sharing. Uh, Brad, just a heads up too. We also had a question that we missed uh, from Scott about, uh, about Neil deGrasse Tyson, about his presentation being kind of choppy and uh, wondering if that is recorded and uh, available. Yes, great question. So um, I have uh, not, I, I believe uh, you can go back and, and view that. I don't know 100% uh, with certainty, but um, I would say probably 95% of all of this uh, content on Tableau Conference 2020 um, you can go back and, and watch. So they may have made, a Tableau may have made some improvements on that specific, um, you know, uh, that, that specific kind of talk or that webinar, uh, but I'm not sure because I have not accessed it uh, afterwards. Um, but yeah, you should be able to, to access that. So perfect. All right, so let me share my screen. All right, let me know when you can see my screen. Yep. Perfect. Okay, so uh, this is the, the Tableau Conference website. Um, before, if you kind of clicked here, it gave you kind of a grid view of, of what was actually being live streamed on Tableau Conference, but um, they don't have this anymore. Uh, so really what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna go to uh, what to watch and you have this episode guide in your my watch list. If you attended Tableau Conference uh, this year, uh, you can actually go to see my watch list uh, and everything that I favorited or I wanted to watch uh, would be included here. So you'll notice the, this little kind of video on demand. You can rewatch all of these by just clicking in here and watching the video. Uh, but uh, let me go back to this episode guide. A really nice thing here is you can see there's 308 results and this is all great content, right? From training, from development, from all kinds of stuff, from you know, hearing, you know, how Chick-fil-A was able to, you know, pivot for, you know, in the age of crisis and so forth. There's all kinds of stuff here. You can search for a specific um, talk that you want to hear. You know, if someone said, you know, here's this Chick-fil-A, um, here it is. Um, so here's an inner works in Chick-fil-A, a pandemic pivot. So that will pop up, but you can also um, search by role. Um, so if, you know, if you're, a, you, if you're new, if you're an analyst, if you're a leader, you can search that way. Um, you can search by category, uh, by topic, and then also lastly by episode type. Um, so this is all accessible um, for free after the conference, which is fantastic. Uh, the only thing is you will have to create um, uh, a login if you didn't uh, already create a login for Tableau Conference uh, 20 this year. 
Uh, but that that takes two seconds. That that's super easy, and you get you know again, this is this is incredible. It's an incredible place to learn and kind of grow your your Tableau skills right here. Uh, and then lastly, I wanted to show you um, the Information Lab um, Tableau Public Viz. And um, this is it. So let me kind of make this a little bit bigger. Um, so they have rated these by the average, um, the average review, right? So the average review for all of these in a, uh, uh, of the five are at the top. And you can see some of them, right? The, the really big hits are, you know, speed tipping. Um, um, here's the, there's the, uh, inner works, uh, and Chick-fil-A that got a five rating. If you hover over here, you can, uh, understand some additional comments of what people said about, um, you can under, you know, you can understand a little bit more detail in it. And if you click into this, it will actually pull up this, um, talk. So it's a super nice thing. Um, one could argue it's actually better to, uh, than, than to use this, than, uh, to go here. Cause you get some, some of that rating content, which is nice. Uh, you can also um, sort it by beginner, intermediate, and advanced. I don't think that they had that specific beginner, intermediate, and, and advanced here. Um, so that was a nice thing. Uh, and then you can you can uh, filter kind of the track, which which they also had, had here. Um, and then lastly, speaker name, right? So if you wanted to hear, you know, you know, your buddy was speaking at Tableau Conference, you can go here and search for that. Um, but I've used this a lot. Um, this viz, and then you can just, you can kind of, you know, maybe if you didn't attend, maybe start with these um, topics first that are fives, uh, and you can see as the ratings go down, um, what that um, kind of, they, they, they get reviewed um, a little bit less um, um, with their average review. Um, while you have this up, Brad, I'm curious to, to kind of pull the group here. Uh, for those of you who did attend, you know, what, were there any of these sessions that you attended that jumped out at you that you would recommend or really resonated with you? Is there anything that you don't see on, on this list that you thought would be worthwhile for the rest of the community to check out? Give it a minute here, anybody? Yeah. And then yeah. Sam, I'm going to flip back yep. over and let you start sharing again. And then we can, I think I may just have one, one additional slide. Speed tipping. Okay. Okay. Yep. So we got, all right. So we have three people already saying speed tipping. Okay. So interesting. Do we have, yeah. So now actually, um, yeah, unless there's any other, did anyone else have any questions, thoughts, feedback uh, for Brad on the TC recap? All right, if anything comes up, let us know. Thanks, Alex. Uh, now it's time to uh, transition to Ryan's segment uh, with election laps, maps, and more. We see what you did there, Ryan. <laughs> I, I was tempted to change. I, I was tempted to change the spelling. I didn't know if you'd be annoyed with me. So, <laughs> <laughs> let me get the sharing. Uh, can you guys see my screen? Looks good. Yeah, we okay. can. Good deal. Uh, so Q and A is going to be at the end. Please direct your questions to the Q and A section instead of the chat. That'll be able to better keep track of the questions that we have or have not answered. So there's a lot of ground that I'm going to be covering in the next 30 minutes. I'll try to keep it to a slower pace, but there's a lot of sheets that I'm trying to cover a lot of different things on here. Uh, please note that I'm covering uh, 2004 to 2016 purposefully. I'd like you to keep your uh, thoughts on the 2020 election out of the comments in here, try to keep professional and courteous to your letter. I took members. I chose election maps because it's very relevant to everyone because we just had an election. But the primary reason was I wanted to, one, prove that I could make a map in Tableau. That's very similar to what we were staring at for an entire week. And I also wanted to hopefully impart some techniques or things that you can use that would be useful in your day-to-day -day visualizations. Next topic is that if you have a keen eye and you remember the electoral college end result, you'll see that 308 is not how many Donald Trump ended up with. I had to create a lot of this data source, which was very surprising to me that I thought it was going to be very public and it was going to be something easily put together. 
I took a data source that was at a county level from MIT and I had to append on electoral college. And I just did a slight, if they won the state by the popular vote, I gave them all of the electoral college from there, ignoring the states that do partial and if there was any faceless uh, electors. So without further ado, here's the data source that I put together because I want you to keep in mind what I went. Uh, it comes back into account when I go through some of these things. So when we're looking at an individual state by year, it's actually being broken out by each candidate. And I end up having to filter down to who won in the future. That's why I bring up this data source. And I always think it's a good tip when you're building a data visualization that you know what level the data is actually at because it allows you to be better create calculated fields that are trying to get you to where you want to be. So I'm going to start going from the top to the bottom. So I always start off with a title and I want to show you a quick tip that one of my team members came up with. So I always make a title and the data status up there. Sometimes we usually put a date, but you can also put a date. And I've also got two different calculated fields, one calling uh, data incomplete and one calling updated complete. And you'll see that when the data tip here, which is a parameter is not equal to the date we're in, this changes back to data incomplete. So if the extract hadn't completed or if it's not to the day that we're expecting it to be, it goes to data incomplete, but when it's on the correct date that we're wanting it to be, it swaps over to the green. And I just wanted to show you how I did that. I create two different calculated fields, data incomplete. I've got the parameter. If it's not equal to the today, I put data incomplete else null. So it'll go null and it'll disappear while updated completed. And you wouldn't have a parameter. The parameter is just to make the demo, the tip a little bit more uh, easy to understand. This would be your data as of that would be coming from your data itself. You would have it equal to whatever you're expecting it to be updated to, and then you give it a name or else you put null in there. And then within the text, you drop in the two calculated fields, you put them next to each other you color one of them red, the one that's incomplete, then you color the other one green. And when this one goes null, the only the one that is supposed to show up that's relevant shows up. First tip there. The first portion that I made here is a stacked bar chart. I sum up the electoral college that each candidate was getting from my state. I've got my year selection here because I have multiple dates from 2000 to 2016. I've got it equal to a parameter up at the top because I like to use parameters because they are actually very flexible for me instead of filters. I think it just gives me more flexibility and I've gotten into the habit of doing that. So up in the top right, or actually the top of the entire workbook, I've got it set to a date. And then if it's equal to that date, I'm filtering it down. Stacked bar chart is like this. I've got it across. I edited the access. I put it at a fixed of 538 for the total. I dropped in a reference line at 270. And then I have hidden the, the access. And then I put on the label. I put how many they got. And then on the election map in here for each one of these sheets, I've gone into the year, filtered down to the party, put in the candidate, and then uh, one tip that we've also gone through, I think last time, was when you're wanting to just show the dimension without anything right here, uh, I usually type in a kind of, uh, ad hoc kind of calculation. I forget what the actual term that Tableau gives it, but I put in here and then I put it on text and then it makes it disappear. And if you were to highlight over, it would be that tiny little portion right there, but it's hidden right there. So I've got both of those up there. The next portion is the state map. Uh, usually I've got this split into three because it gets distorted with uh, Alaska and Hawaii. I've got the continental, I've got the exclusions for those two states. 
but I'm gonna keep that. I want it to focus here. And one of the tips that I was gonna tell you was that when you create these maps and you create all these things that are on here and you have Alaska up in the top left, you can just duplicate your sheet and then you only keep the state that you want or you're excluding the ones that you want. So I've got everything in here. When you highlight over each state, I've decided to go with uh, data in this, uh, a Viz and tooltip. And why I did that was because when I'm filtering down to the state or when I'm filtering down to the party that won, if you remember how the data was filled up, every one of these states has at least four rows. I'm filtering for the state winner up here if the candidate equals the max votes, I'm putting a one, I'm filtering it down for that. I put the party that it ends up filtering down to it. But if I were to highlight over this and I were to put the candidate votes, it wouldn't be showing all of the rows because if you remember the data, it has each one of those rows. That's why I create a different sheet and I put it in a vision tooltip in here. Within the vision tooltip, one of the tips that I was gonna give you was actually an Andy Kreeble tip. I've got each one of these dimensions up here, but I create a winner because I don't want someone to have to scan over which one, which person got the most percentage of the total. And I put a star here. And how I do that is that I create a calculated field and I say if the candidate votes equals the max, which I take the max or I get the max in here from a little bit of Excel magic. I'm doing a max if in here to make sure that it's maxing to the point that's the person that won. And then you're able to put in a little ASCII character and I've chosen a star, else it's putting nothing in there. I drop this into here, it puts the star and to make it stand out a little bit more, I choose a different color and I made it gold. You wouldn't be able to conditionally change that to red or blue, which I would have ideally liked to do that, but it only allows you to choose one. So I've got this in here. One thing that the maps always do when you're on one of the news sites, you're able to click and it drills down. So I did the same thing. And what I'm doing and how I'm doing that is an action parameter, which was a feature that I believe came out last year and I use them all the time. And on my dashboard, I've got in here, and I've got it selected from Alaska, Hawaii, and my state map. I've got my state parameter right here. And then it's sourcing from those three. And then it's putting in the state into that parameter right there. And when that happens, it filters my other sheets over here. It shows just the state at the county level. And it also makes these maps null. And it makes these net maps null because I wanted it to be at a county level and it also hides them. And how you do that is you have a different calculated field. I'm looking at if the state parameter equals USA, then I'm putting a one in here, else zero. And you'll see that zero when it's not USA is being excluded, which makes the sheet go null. And another one last step that you need to make to make these work, which condenses these ones over here, is that they need to be all in the same container. It's another tip that I use all the time. If you click on the tab at the top, it goes to the container that it's most, uh, the most, the closest one to it. If I were to click one more time, it goes to the next one up. So that's how I do the hiding of these sheets and showing the opposite of this. I've got a different state filter in here that's looking for if on this county map, if the state is equal to the state parameter in here that was just put in here by the action parameter, it's putting a one else zero. And if you were to take this off, you would see all the United States. But I wanna focus on Indiana because we put that in there. In here, I do something very similar that I did with the state map. I've chosen the county viz in tooltip. 
I've done the same thing for the same reason. I've created a county invis with the same Andy Krebel uh, tip. And you're able to see the results by county. The one thing that I thought was interesting over here was a visualization that I haven't seen by a new source, which would show each election. And it's showing the percentage over time by each one of these elections with 50% as a reference line in here. So you're able to quickly see how closely it came to rolling the state over to a different candidate. On the very right, I wanted to see how many votes that each party got from the last election compared to the last election. And what I did here was I dropped in the candidate votes. I used a table calculation. I did a difference. I did down, I did year, and I did relative to previous. And what that allows me to quickly see is that Republicans from 2000 to 2004, they gained 233,602 votes. And then as you would expect with Barack Obama, they gained, uh, the Democrats gained 405,000 from last year. And you're able to see that from uh, 2008 to 2016, they continuously lost from then. Thought that was an interesting way to look at that. Uh, you're also able to, with a normal action parameter, not action parameter, action, a filter action, you're able to choose on each one of these counties and you're able to see in the same way what happened within those counties. Another thing that I did within here, I, you'll see that percentage Republican, percentage Democrat. Uh, you're, you're seeing it by county right now, but if I were to reset this, which this is setting my state parameter back to USA, which nulls the two right ones, and then it brings back the other, the other graphs that I wanted to show at the very beginning. And then here at the bottom, it's switching from seeing it at a county level to a state level. And that's as simple as I've got my state or county up here. State parameter is equal to that USA that I was saying that the reset puts the USA back in there, which determines which graphs are shown or which sheets are shown. And then I, based on that same parameter, I'm putting in state on the left side, but if it's filtered down to a state already, I want it to show county and I want it to show what percentage descending by each one of the parties, what percentage and who is the most concentrated within that party. Then if I were to show you one of the new demos of, I think I haven't used it too often, but it's animations and it's fairly cool in this presentation uh, and how you add that is animations up here and I wanna show you it without. We'll start in 2004. You'll see that everything changes. And unless you're really quick with your eye, you don't really see all of the states changing and you kind of lose a little bit of the information, especially down here, who's gone up or who's gone down in terms of their concentration or who flipped between the states. I added on a little animation that's as simple as going to format animations. I used a little custom timer here, but they give suggestions of fast to very slow. I made mine 1.35 seconds and it's being applied to all of the workbook itself. You're able to click on individual sheets and you're able to change them based on that as well. And you're able to determine if you want this sheet to be faster or slower than any of the other sheets. And when I turn that on, I'll page through each one and you'll see that there, you're able to see more which ones change and over time, you're able to get that little bit more information that you saw this one, this one, and this one changing. And down here, you're able to see if they go up or down. but you'll see that this goes to county, does the same thing.
And another thing that's nice about these animations is when you have them, this right sheet over here, when these are sometimes not changing that often, the transition that you see that happens, it actually allows your users to see that something is happening on the right side when you click to filter down. So this is being impacted by the left wall. If I were to have these animations turned off, maybe they miss the transition if they're very close that they don't see this changing. How I reset this to USA, I've got a different sheet right here within my action parameters showing you how those work. It's the same thing as you normally do. You go to add action, change parameter, and I'll show you the state one. It's very similar to how you use the filter. You're looking at your source sheet. I'm using my election map, or this is the workbook election map. I'm using Alaska, Hawaii, and my state map. I'm putting it into this parameter, putting that. Only for reset, I do reset state parameter and I put USA back into that, which all of my filters for that, for my nulling out these sheets and showing the other ones are determined by the state parameter. But that is everything. I think I went pretty quickly. Hopefully you guys took away some things and you have some questions. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, we do have one question uh, from Micah. He had said, uh, without creating a parameter for each state, is there a way the end user would be able to designate each state as D slash R slash I? I have a similar use case where I'd like the user to be able to assign A slash B to dimension members and then compare groups A versus B. I have a way to do that too. I can do that on the fly. Perfect. Micah, this is your lucky day. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll see if I can do it quickly and or not. Here, how dare I say we are running ahead of schedule? So if it's not too quickly, I think we'll be okay, but. Maybe I can just walk, talk through it. So what a, this was actually gonna be another presentation that I was gonna show on something similar to this. And what I would do is instead of having the party right here, I would be allowing a user to put in, I would allow a user to have an input parameter and I would turn this to, String, it's on all. Hit me with more questions. I'm going to try to knock this out in front of everyone on the okay. spot we'll see um anyone else have any other questions uh thoughts comments let's see nothing has come through what you end up with doing i can't do this on the spot so, but what you would end up doing would be you would have a parameter over here you would ask them to put something in there and then you would have them an action parameter in here and you would like, you would do an if statement. And if it meets a criteria, you're either, you're showing this parameter input as opposed to what the party would be. And then you drop that party on here and as a dimension for the, the color. And so it would be showing input X instead of Democrat or Republican or whatever example you're talking about. And when you have that dimension built out that way with the input that the user gives, you're starting able to break down a, a map or any kind of metrics and roll it up to whatever the user gave as an input. 
I've done this on a different visualization and I'm struggling to think of how exactly I did it outside the explanation I just gave you, but I can't pull up the dashboard that I would show because it's for my company. Yeah. Sensitive proprietary data. Um, if so, you contact Brad, you me after I can share that or okay. not, not my company, but how I did it on a different. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Great to hear Micah. Uh, Brad, did you have any other thoughts or questions before we move forward? No, yeah, I mean, Ryan, I, I, I thought that you could accomplish that with a set action, but it looks like it's one of the two, either a set action or parameter action or, or one of the, you gotta connect those two, but yeah. Okay, gotcha. Um, and we will be sharing out this workbook as well, correct? If people wanna play around, okay, yeah. So. Um, you know, Micah or anyone else, if you, you know, once you get this, if you want to play around with it yourself and you want to follow up with us with any additional questions, or maybe Ryan can pull up something else that isn't sensitive, um, we can help out with that too. Another thing, we're posting all of these workbooks on our any Tableau user group, uh, <laughs> Tableau public. So you're going to have access to these things that you're able to pull down yourself. It's not going to be a emailed out file. So you're able to see these on our public. Yeah, so we'll email out the link to Tableau Public um, along with posting that link in the, in the LinkedIn group as well. Um, okay, well, if there's no other questions, then we can go ahead and uh, move forward to wrap up then. No, nope. so, tricks. Oh, you're right, oh my God. <laughs> How did I forget tips and tricks? Jeez Louise, all right. Go for it. All right. Let me share my screen here and we'll give you guys some tips and tricks here. You know, that's everyone's here. Can everyone see my screen? I think you're good. All right, perfect. Um, so Ryan, I actually didn't know this, but he teed me up pretty well for, for this little trick. So you know how, you know, we kind of want to get rid of this stuff here. Uh, there's a couple different, you know, ways that you can do this. Um, but if you actually just click in here once, so you see when I clicked that, that line kind of popped up and then um, uh, I will share this workbook in, uh, but if you, uh, it, on a, I'm on a Mac, so if you do a, a control command and then the right arrow, see how it's getting bigger. It's ever so slightly and that format up above is, is getting highlighted. So you make that a little bit bigger and then I can grab it and make it smaller and I'm still grabbing it and I'm doing the same thing and I'm going to uh, move it to the left five times. And now it's done. There's not, you can't even like click into it yet to see it. In order to get this back, like when I do that, right, I can't even grab that other thing. I, I'm only making the year of the order date bigger. I can't even grab that. So in order to grab this back, you actually have to reset the cards. So if you go down, to, if you go to format, you go to cell size and um, what is this? Text cell to reset. There you go. So anyway, nice little trick. Uh, click on here and then hold uh, control uh, control right arrow on a Mac and control compa control command right arrow on a Mac. You can actually get rid of this A, B, and C uh, altogether. Uh, so that's one um, additional line on a uh, on a graph. Um, so say that you know this is this is a little light. We wanted some additional space here. Um, well, we can add um, a reference line here. So if I add a reference line, we can make it a constant. Uh, and then I'll just write, type in the value, 900,000. Uh, we can remove the label and we can remove the tooltip. And now you'll see, oh, let me um, line, make it none. And now you have additional axis space on your graph without that actual, that line. Um, so it provides a little bit more space depending on what you're doing. Um, here, we're going to make kind of a dot plot um, axis or a dot plot visual. And I'll, and I'll explain why this might be uh, beneficial for you um, as I kind of go through this. Um, let me kind of clear this table calculation so I can redo it. 
Um, we're going to add first add average of one. And this is like a Tableau trick to, to for a variety of things. Uh, but if you just double click up here in the in one of the panes, the column to rows, you can actually type something in here. Um, so when I create that average one, it's going to give me another axis here uh, that goes from zero to one. This is actually going to um, this is what it's going to look like with 100%. And so this is actually going to act as the 100% marker. Um, so keep that in mind as I kind of go through this. Um, we're going to want a dual uh, axis, so they're on the same thing. And we're also going to want to synchronize the axes. And you'll notice that one goes all the way down here, right? Because this is just zero to one right here, average of one. Um, we're going to change average of one to a bar. And then it's really going to look funky. Um, and then we're going to go into sum of sales here and we're going to add a quick table calculation. We're going to do percent of total. And you'll notice that bar come back up. But we also want, we want to compute using pain down. And I'll explain this here in a second. So now you'll see, well, we, we've lost kind of our, you know, we don't even know what this is, this is saying. If you go to your size then and make this super, super low, we can actually see as a percent of total, I can hide this. We can actually see from a percent of total how far along something is to 100%. So it actually gives you a viewpoint. This is 44% towards 100. And it's a nice visual for, for your users. Um, the last thing to kind of clean up here is you see how there's this, uh, there's this line in front of the dot. In order to flip flop those, you just have to flip flop these up here. So now you'll notice that that, let me change the color here so it's a little bit easier to see. So now you'll notice that the dot is actually on top of the line versus before there's just a little kind of, uh, the line is going through the dot. Um, so anyway, that's kind of a dot plot example for you. Um, this is a quick one, reset cards. Um, sometimes your cards get, you know, kind of all around or you move them yourself. Um, all you do is you go to worksheet, um, you go to um, show cards, reset cards, and they're all back in the same place. Uh, here's a rounded bar example. Um, <clears throat> rounded bar charts, some people will say they're not good, uh, but I'm going to show you anyway how to create them. There's a variety of ways you can create uh, rounded bar charts. Uh, this is just one way. Um, so I'm going to do that same trick, and I'm going to type in average of zero. Um, we are going to drag this. So it's a shared axis and the shared axis means it's this two green rulers. So we'll drag that there and you'll see it, you know, there's, there's nothing really coming together yet. Um, we can remove, we can, we move measure names from rows to detail. And now we're getting closer. We change the mark type from automatic to a line. And now we're going to move measure names onto path. And you'll notice we have small little now rounded bars. Um, we can make these, these a little bit larger. And now we have our rounded bars. Uh, another little thing that you could do is you can bring a copy of um, measure values onto color to kind of make a gradient chart if you'd like. Um, so that's how you make a kind of a rounded bar chart. Um, keep formatting. So um, you see here, these are formatted specifically. If I just pull category on top of subcategory, I lose the formatting, right? We don't want that. So a trick here to keep this formatting, double click in here and type in, in this case, category, click enter, and it keeps your formatting. Disable sorting. Um, sometimes you wanna disable sorting. Uh, this is a, a quick little thing. You can go to worksheet, uh, view, uh, show sort controls. If you uncheck this, You'll notice the little uh, sales uh, sort control icon will uh, be removed. So then people can't sort anymore. 
Unicode characters. Uh, Unicode characters are very, very useful to put in um, titles, text, axes, labels, a variety of things. You'll notice here that I have this little sc scroll on, uh, skull and crossbones. Um, I can actually uh, copy this or any sort of other um, Unicode character and add it to really anything else, right? So say I wanted to add it to ship mode here, uh, I can go to rename and I can actually paste um, that skull and crossbones right there and then it's, it, it's here. Um, so again, you can, this is really helpful if you need to kind of include this, you know, maybe up here, if I wanted to include it here and I wanted to make it big um, and maybe I wanted to make it, you know, red uh, and bold, right? So you can actually add nice Unicode characters to help kind of make your, uh, make your visualization pop. Um, I've included kind of a, um, a website for unit for Unicode characters. If you don't already have one, uh, I typically use those a lot, so um, it, it's pretty handy. Um, customizing your fiscal year. Uh, this is an old one that, that I like to show a lot um, because I feel like it's very useful. Um, but if you go in, if you right click your uh, data source, uh, in this case, it's Sample Superstore, and you go to um, uh, Date Properties. Uh, you can um, change all your date properties here. So fiscal year, if you if your starts, you know, say in June, you can change your fiscal year to June. Click OK, and then everything will calculate based on based on the June fiscal year. Um, here we have two little tricks: uh, renaming uh, dashboard zones and swapping your sheet. Um, so uh, if I go in here and I double click this uh, to Ryan's, and I go to layout you can actually uh, rename these. So instead of vertical, if I want to rename and I can rename this to um, placeholder for uh, week over week sales. You can do that here. Uh, and then it makes, um, it kind of makes your organization with containers a little bit easier. Uh, before uh, containers are, are pretty, it can be a little hairy to work with at times. Uh, this just adds a little bit of additional kind of organization that you can have when you're when you're creating dashboards. Um, the other nice thing is you can do a sheet swap. So before you'd say, okay, I don't want this. I need to pull in something else. You pull it in here. Uh, you remove this one. It kind of gets clunky. Um, but here, um, all you do is you go over uh, to what you want to replace it with, and you click this little button here that's kind of a uh, an up, uh, 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 up and left arrow, and it says swap sheets and cover over there. If you just click that, then it's actually going to swap it here uh, without having the kind of the clunky kind of back and forth. Um, show and hide containers. Uh, in this case, um, I am going to, um, to select the container. Um, I am going to make this floating. Um, and now I can click down here and I can go show hide button. And now your user has a button where they can show or hide some additional information, whether that be filters, uh, legends, uh, whatnot, uh, in order to get um, some nice um, uh, real estate here. And if you click here, they remove and they show up. So um, I kind of used this similar trick for those of you that were uh, attended last uh, iTug um, to, per to show kind of a help screen on top of your, your dashboard. So. Um, that's uh, for if, if you're curious about that, that will be um, that's already updated on our um, Tableau Indianapolis Tableau user group um, uh, Tableau public page. Explain data. Uh, this was interesting. I haven't used this a whole lot, um, but uh, it's cool. So if you click on a button here or a, a point and you click on this icon here, this little light bulb icon, it pops up the explain data uh, menu. And it will give you some additional information. I'm not going to go through all, every one of these uh, for the sake of time, but you can see the sum of sales of this is higher than expected, and it'll provide you some possible explanations. Right, the selected mark Tamara Chan has an average sale of um, almost 1,600. Uh, this is higher than expected average sales, uh, which is thus increasing. Um, uh, there's an extreme value it'll show where one record has a 17,500 that's really increasing it. Um, you can go to some of profit if you want to look at some of the profit versus some sales. Uh, you can just add, get some additional information here um, that's really pretty cool 
um, based on the, the data point or the data points uh, that you select. Um, so again, that is just clicking on a, a point, a data point and clicking this uh, light bulb button here uh, to bring up that kind of explain, uh, explain data. And I believe it works for multiple points. Oh, it doesn't. So it's just one point. So it's just a single point. It brings up that, that explain data. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, this is not really a trick, but uh, I've ran into this before. Uh, Tableau now lets you have 50 table columns. Um, this is not a best practice. I wouldn't recommend text tables, but sometimes you need to add a bunch of different uh, things here. If you go into uh, analysis, go to table layout, advanced, uh, you'll notice that this is 50. Um, it used to be, I want to say 16 um, is what you could do. Uh, and there might have been some other hacks that you could you could do in order to, to up that, uh, but now that's 50. So um, anyway, not a best practice, wouldn't recommend it, but it's something I wanted to show. Table labels. Um, so uh, many of you may want, you know, the, the Tableau um, defaults to the labels being on the bottom, um, but what if you want those at the top? Um, so again, you go to analysis, you go to table layouts, you go to advanced, and then all you have to do is check this little um, show innermost level at bottom of the view when there's a vertical axis. To be completely honest, I don't know exactly what this gobbledygook means, but if you just unclick that and click apply, you'll see that they popped up at the top. So I'll show that again, click apply. So now it's checked. So now they're gonna be at the bottom, popped up at the bottom. Now uncheck, apply and watch them pop up to the top. So that's a nice little trick. Um, this is with all of us on Zoom um, calls. Um, this would be beneficial. I thought about this uh, during Ryan's pre presentation. Um, but if you open up uh, some sort of um, calculated field um, in here, uh, if we want to make this uh, larger, um, if you hit Control and then Scroll, I'm sorry, Command and then Scroll, you can actually make this text bigger and smaller here. Right, so all of you that are that are in Zoom meetings all the time, this is a very useful feature. You've probably seen this a million times on other uh, Tableau uh, presentations, but um, this was a nice little feature here. Uh, let's see, we got three more. I think we're doing good on time. Um, multiple subcategories. So for those of you that use the ATTR trick, when you have multiple subcategories, it gives this star. For a user that's not, you know, a Tableau user, this can be um, pretty cryptic. You, you know, what does a star mean? Is the thing broken? You know, is this is something going on here? Um, so what you can do is I will show you uh, a calculated field. And if I show you this, um, this is how basically um, to create the calculated field. And I'll use my, my trick to show you uh, uh, this bigger. This basically says, if the minimum category does not equal the maximum subcategory, then it's multiple subcategories, then display this. If not, then just explain the max. I think this could have been min too, um, but I just use max here. And what you'll notice when I go out of this is when I unclick all and just click accessories, you'll see accessory, the old ATTR has accessories, but as soon as I click two, the top ATTR goes to the, the star and this turns into multiple subcategories. So it's a nice little thing that you can kind of include in your analyses to not to avoid this kind of the star. Uh, and you would use this, um, this type of um, calculation uh, for, for other uh, items that you may have. Um, so that's a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool little trick there. Um, I wanted to show uh, the dynamic footer. Many of you guys have probably done this. Um, let me go into the sheet. Uh, in order to kind of create this kind of dynamic footer, um, you know, you kind of have a blank canvas. You can accomplish this with the polygon that, um, that Ryan kind of mentioned. But if you want to use any of these in, in your worksheet, you either have to have them on detail or actually in the worksheet. So if I go in here and um, recreate this, this is hard text, right? I've just typed data between. Um, 
in order to have this minimum order date, this is exactly what I have minimum order date here on the, the detail shelf and maximum order date. Um, in order to put this in here, I could delete this and you go to this insert and you insert minimum order date there, do the same thing with maximum order date. Uh, you can also add region um, and you might, guys might be thinking, well, Brad, this isn't really a trick. The really the trick is, is when I go onto this dynamic footer, the um, how, how Tableau uh, recognizes the actual filter on here, you'll notice that these uh, will actually change based on this and it acts a little bit different um, than if you didn't have this on. So if I uncheck this, right, region none, date between none, but if I click central, then it's gonna say region central and it's gonna give those specific dates that the central region has. And once I click east, it's gonna actually says central and east versus that, that multiple categories that I showed kind of beforehand. Um, so you can see it, it lists central east south. So it just helps your user to understand what they're actually looking at, right? To include these kind of dynamic footers, uh, it just helps uh, with some of the context. Um, if I add the fourth one, it says and more. Um, but then if I also just uncheck all of these and then click all, it will actually region all. So uh, anyway, it's just a nice little reminder that the dynamic footers um, can really help your user. Uh, the last two tricks that I have, distribute evenly. Um, this was a new one, maybe in the last year or so. Um, you double click um, kind of your, your container. So I do this, this little double click and grab the container. You click this carrot here, distribute contents evenly. And you'll notice now that we have nice even um, visualizations. In this case, it's text and a visualization, but um, you get the picture there. Um, let's see. Oh, I do. I actually, I, you, got, you guys have a bonus one. Um, move labels with a click, uh, right? So many people here, I have our labels uh, being at the line ends. Um, but say uh, you're trying, you really don't want it there. You kind of want to customize it. All you need to do is just click on this and you can move it. Right, click on this and you can move it, right? So if you needed some other space or something here, uh, you can just move those and now you have um, your labels a little bit moved. Lastly, um, adding totals um, to a table. Um, so this, you know, the traditional way is you would, um, you'd go into analysis, you'd go to totals, you know, you'd go through here and you'd say, well, which one do I actually want? Do I want this? No, that's not really what I wanted. Um, so a quick way to add every uh, thing is go into this analytics pane, uh, move this totals over here. And instead of selecting one of these, if you just pull it down to underneath these on the table, oh, and that didn't do what I was hoping for. It's supposed to add, oh, there it was. So you see there's no, there's no uh, subtotals here. If I move this over, it's going to add all of this. It's going to add subtotals, column totals, and grand totals. Um, so there are your kind of 20 tips and tricks. Do we have any questions, Sam? I know that was pretty quick, but I wanted to, I think our time was supposed to be 325. So I'm two minutes ahead of schedule. Um, like I said, this will be um, shared uh, on the, the Tableau Public Indianapolis um, uh, Tableau user group page. And there are some directions in the caption um, on, on each of these tips for you. So, Sam, any questions? Oh, let's see. There's no questions in the chat or in Q&A. Uh, is there any members that has a question for Brad before we move on to wrap up for real this time? <laughs> <laughs> let's see. Well, feedback that these are all great, which I would agree, plus the bonus is always nice. All right, and yeah, we have, uh, we have some people saying, hey, looking forward to checking it out on Tableau Public. All right, great. Yes, uh, we will go ahead and if, tell you what, I'll go ahead and paste the LinkedIn group uh, URL in the chat right now so that way everyone has it. Yep. yep. Um, and then I guess we can go ahead and uh, open the floor to general Q&A and wrap up. Sam, do you want to share the uh, the PowerPoint, or do you, we just want to do it on the fly? Uh, let's see. Well, I could pull up. Um, we didn't really have a slide for the wrap up. I guess I could pull up the. Okay, no, that's that's fine. We can just 
We can have open discussion. That's easy. Yeah. So I was really just going to throw up the happy holidays agenda slide. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it's the thought that counts, right? So I've actually got that answer for how you would do it with uh, like putting in uh, multiple states into a different dimension. If I could share that as a quick tip. Yeah. How much time great. do we have? Um, we've got six minutes. I just uh, pasted the LinkedIn group URL as well. Okay. I'm going to share this and probably will gloss over uh, some of the details. Let me know when you can see. Yep. Okay. So uh, Brad was right. It's using uh, sets and uh, you create a set. So I've got state set one, state set two. I've got two different parameters, uh, input one, input two. And then what I'm doing is I'm using a set action to select and input the states into each one of my sets. And then if it's in the set and this is a Boolean, so it's just checking if it's true or false. If it's true, it's putting the first input in and it looks to the next if statement. It looks to the second set. If it's in that one, it puts in the, the, the next input else it just puts in the party. And once you have that set up, you go into your actions. I created two different set actions. I've got it uh, menu off of state map. I put in the data source of this, and then I put the values that I'm selecting into the state set one. I do the same thing for state set two. And you're able to select on the fly. I want to put all these sets into set two. And I'm putting it into Ryan party. So I just got 79 electoral college. But this would be, you're able to do multi-selections and put it into a set. And then you're able to do visualizations based on like a user defined dimension. Nice. So Brad just picked up a lot. He just became president. <laughs> We wouldn't want that. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for that, Ryan. Um, and, and really thank you, uh, Brad and Ryan. Um, again, great presentation, great content. Uh, and I think as much as we love to hear you guys present uh, to the group out there, uh, we're always looking for opportunities to, to get you involved. Uh, so if you'd be interested in presenting in any of these meetups, whether we finally get to meet in person again or doing the virtual, please reach out and let us know. Uh, we don't want to be the only ones talking. And again, that's not a slight against Brad or Ryan. Um, would also like to thank all of you for investing your time uh, in the group uh, with what you do and joining these calls like this. I know we're all very busy and our time is valuable. So to take a couple hours a day out or a quarter out, uh, it's not lost on us. So we do appreciate that. Um, also would like to just take a moment and thank Sam for all of the time and the energy and effort that she's put into you. Uh, helping establish and, and grow this community and this group. And we wish you nothing but the best. I get the luck of getting to continue to work with her uh, on in her career, but uh, we do thank you for, for all that you've done, Sam. And then just thank real you. quick, wrapping up on a few things. Um, we're going to be sending out a survey. Very helpful if you guys will take a few minutes and fill out that survey. Be honest. Uh, that's what we're using to, to really decide what's presented, um, the, the length of time that we, we carve out for these meetups, uh, even the time of day or week that we're doing it. So, so the more that you're involved in those uh, surveys and, and just being a part of this, then we're going to make it even more uh, beneficial to you. Uh, the other thing, it's been mentioned a couple of times already, the resources, uh, they'll be in the Tableau Public. We'll post a link to them uh, in the LinkedIn group as well as send out an email with the link. Uh, so I want to make sure to get those out to you. We're hoping to get that done in the next week or so. And we will be looking to schedule a Q1 meetup. Um, no decisions have been made, whether it be in person or virtual, most likely will still be virtual. Um, but as, as uh, members of the, our chair members, we're, we're constantly talking and trying to figure out what makes sense, right? And right now it's easy. We, we need to stay virtual, but um, as things start to clear up, maybe we can all get together again. Any last minute questions or uh, Sam, Brad, Ryan, anything that you want to add? Just one quick thing on the uh, the, the folks that uh, to present. You guys don't need to be experts on any specific topic. 
Um, a lot of the times it's beneficial for um, users to understand kind of what your company uh, is doing with Tableau and kind of understanding the processes there. So even if you just wanted to talk about, hey, this is what you know company ABC is doing with Tableau, here's our process flow, here's a couple of our dashboards or something, um, that, would, that would be very beneficial. So don't feel like you have to you know, do anything super advanced. Uh, we have new people here, we have advanced users. Don't be shy. Uh, we would we would love 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 to have you and, and kind of um, you know have the, have the users present. So um, any topic is is really um, is really uh, in, in bounds here. Yep, definitely. Uh, no no slides required either. It's always nice to have a, a company slide or two about your org or what you're doing. But otherwise, we want to hear your story. That's what's most important. If you're more of a show and tell kind of person, we're here for that too. Oh. All right. Well, looks like we're at time now. Um, thank you again, everyone. Uh, it's been great leading this group, and uh, I will still be around if anyone needs me. Um, please keep an eye out for the resources we'll be sending by, via email and in LinkedIn. Uh, and please feel free to message us or reach out. You know, again, I'll still be around and available if you have questions, if you're just interested in presenting, uh, or if you're looking for additional resources. Thank you again, everyone. Happy holidays, guys. Happy holidays. Bye. Hey, everyone. Yeah, it's